Today I'm taking a look at the Humming Guru Ultrasonic Vinyl Record Cleaner. Now this was a Kickstarter that I backed approximately a year ago, it's just arrived now, and I've always wanted to try out one of these ultrasonic cleaning devices for records to see whether or not they really work. The idea is that the record goes inside the machine, sits in a bath of water, the water's vibrated with ultrasonic frequencies, that's supposed to get the gunk out of the groove of your record. Whether or not that works, we'll find out. Now traditionally these things have been rather big, bulky, industrial looking and expensive devices, this one was advertised as being more one for the individual user, something for the home. This is one record at a time, but it's a nice little compact device. It's designed to fit onto a shelf that you put your 12 inch records on once you've finished using it. And as far as price goes, it was towards the lower end, or it perhaps is one of the cheapest ones you can get. Uh, all in though, the cost to deliver this to the UK and pay all the duties and things was around about £350. So it's not a cheap device, but for one of these it is. So let's get it out of the box and have a good look at it. Now of course there are countless record cleaning devices out there, and the reason I'm testing this one today is because this is the one that I've got. I've shown other ones on the channel in the past. One that I didn't show was a, a big vacuum cleaner type device I bought once that broke after about an hour, so I didn't even get a chance to shoot it. So hopefully this will last a little bit longer. I don't know if you can see there, but it slopes down at either side to a central hole in the bottom, which is of course the drain hole. Yeah, so we're using standard plug there and a 12 volt power adapter. I'll plug all that in later. I have no idea what's going on with this stuff here. We'll find out in a second uh, after I've read the instructions. Right, first off, gotta say, excellent set of instructions. Really clear, good illustrations, very easy to follow. So, top marks for that. Right, let me explain what I've got here after reading those. So, this is the seven inch adapter. If you want to clean your seven inch records in it, you need to make them up to a 12 inch size. This does that. And it's got these little rubber sort of feet type things which go into this section here and hold the record in place. This is the water tank out of the side. And I think you can just see there, there are markings on there up to 400 milliliters, which is the maximum it'll hold. And this side here, we've got a seven and 12 inch indicator. So basically just fill the water up to the 12 inch indicator and then pour it out into the top of the machine. In this side, there's a filter here. You have to use distilled water as well, or at least it suggests you should do, which is what I'm gonna do. I'll have to go and get some from the chemist in a minute. So there's one filter in there. The other one is in the base here. If I can just get to this. So that is the air filter and it slides out like that. This here is a multifunctional device. It's a dipstick effectively that goes and locks in the bottom of there to show the water level. There are three marks here on the side which you follow for the different kinds of records. Also, this takes out another filter in the bottom. It's a tool that if we push it, push it down here and then lock it into there and pull it back, it removes that thing out of there. So that's a, another little filter that you can clean. I think you just rinse that one under a tap if you need to. I'll just pop that back in there. And there's a wheel at either side of here, and that's what spins the record around. So it does it all automatically. And again, this thing is used for removing those. You can pop those out of there. Right, so I'm gonna fill this up to that 12 inch position there. The top of this, can be removed which makes it easier to fill up so that's around about 400 millilitres of water up to there so now we're just going to pop that into the machine the real reason they're asking you to use distilled water isn't anything to do with the cleaning of the record it's just to do with the fact that if it has any kind of minerals in here they might over time clog up the network of pipes inside the bottom you'll end up getting calcification and things of course, I better not forget to put this in the bottom because that's where the water is going to drain at the end of the cleaning cycle. OK, now let me tell you about the record that I'm going to be using to demonstrate the effectiveness or otherwise of this cleaner. A couple of things to consider when I'm picking a record. First off, it's got to be one that isn't going to hit any YouTube content matches. Secondly, it's got to be something that has plenty of quiet passages in it so we can listen out for any crackles and pops so we can see if after a clean they've disappeared. Well, with that in mind, I bought this off eBay. This is a record that's called CoStar, the record acting game. 
Now, it says it's a game. I don't see any way of scoring it. To me, it seems more like a way to practice your acting skills at home with a record. The idea being Arlene Dahl reads scenes from the motion picture Casablanca and you are provided with a script on the inside here and you read your lines out in response to Arlene's lines in the gaps that she has provided. Well, obviously, I'm not going to be reading those sections out, so we get some nice quiet passages on here where we can really hear all the noise coming through that's on the record, so we can then determine after a subsequent clean how's that noise gone. Now, another thing, of course, you've got to consider is you've got to get a record that needs cleaning. Fortunately, this one... Whilst it looks lovely and clean, and clearly the person who sold this on eBay has gone through and given it a good wipe over, when I played it back for the first time, it was full of crackles and pops on both sides. Now, on that initial playback, I also recorded the record at the same time onto this PCM recorder. So it's only had one play so far, and that has been recorded. Now, I'll also mention that whenever you see this record being played back on this Sony record player, you're not actually listening to the audio from that. That's just B-roll that I'm going to record later on. So you've got something to look at. You're actually just listening to the audio files that I recorded onto here. So it's uh, not a direct feed. Uh, in fact, just to demonstrate the magic of editing, I'm going to stick some of that footage in now, even though I haven't shot it yet. We knew very little about each other when we were in love in Paris. If we leave it that way, maybe we'll remember those days, not Casablanca. You can believe that if you like. Now, what you were listening to there was a little section from Side B. Now, after I recorded that, I then went and cleaned Side B with a cloth and some record cleaning spray just to have a base level of what a normal clean would achieve and then we're going to test it out by cleaning it in this to see whether or not that gets better results. However, I hit a snag. After playing both side A and B for that first time, there was so much gunk in the groove on the record on both sides that it clogged up the stylus on the record player. I didn't realise this at the time because of course it's hidden behind the front here. So then when I cleaned it and then recorded it again, it had all this gunk on there and it just gave this kind of muffled, distorted sound quality to it. In fact, I'll just let you have a listen to some now. We knew very little about each other when we were in love in Paris. If we leave it that way, maybe we'll remember those days, not Casablanca. Now, if things were so bad there, you might have heard that it slowed the record down in places. There's so much dirt, gunk or whatever it is in this groove that it was dragging the stylus and actually adjusting the speed of the record as it rotated. Now, that really ruined the initial test I wanted to do because I wanted to show a sort of before and after and the after was just so gunged up I couldn't really compare the two. But if anything, it does demonstrate the fact that trying to clean this thing with a cloth is a waste of time. The gunk is too far down in the groove for a cloth to get to. OK, so here's our crackly record. We're just going to make sure it goes in these slots at either end. And there we go. Now, I don't know how well this comes across on the camera, but we're looking down the slot of the device here, and that's the water you can see down there in the bottom. And it's running just shy of the centre label, so it's getting into the runout area, but fortunately not getting the paper label wet. And that means that the entire surface of the record as it rotates will be cleaned properly. It just shows you the importance of getting the right amount of water in here though. Now I'll just talk about the controls here for a second. You can see in the centre there the flashing light, that is our start slash pause button. But around there we've got three other controls. If I press the auto button, the first light comes on, that indicates it will clean a record for two minutes and then it will automatically dry it. If I press it again, we get the second light coming on. That indicates a five minute clean. That's for records that need a bit more attention and then it will automatically dry it at the end. But the other versions are you could just do the same thing with the clean yourself. You could do the two minute or the five minute clean and then you'd have to dry it yourself or not if you didn't want to. And then we've just got the drying option at the top on its own here as well. Around on the side, we've got the main power switch DC input and then a two position switch in the middle. If it's to the left, it means it will dry a record for five minutes or to the right, it's 10 minutes. Right, so for this first clean, I'm going for the five minute option. We've got it to the 10 minute drying time on the right. All I need to do now is press start and it should be off and running. 
Now it is supposed to be quieter than some of the competition, or at least that's how it was advertised. Initially, there was a bit of a high-pitched whistle came in then. I suspect that's due to the fact it hasn't been used before more than anything else, but it does have quite a bit of sound to it. Okay, now this sounds like the pump is emptying all the water out into the tank at the bottom. So I suspect we're going to go into the drying mode any second now. Yeah, I, I would not call this quiet. You don't want this thing cleaning a record in the same room that you're trying to listen to another one. Right, now we're into the drying mode. Yeah, there's a bit of air coming through there, so it's... Uh, it's blowing a fan across the surface of the record to dry it off. Right, well that's it. I don't think the water that's being collected in here is going to look dirty, but uh, it's hard to tell with this being tinted. Let's just pour it out into some clear water in a glass container and we'll see if it looks slightly misty. Let's just take the lid off this so we're not filtering this and we'll just see what it looks like once it goes into there. Yeah, I can't see any difference in the water at all. I can't see any fragments in it. Uh, no, those are bubbles. So, first off, here's what side A sounded like on its first play without any cleaning. You are an expatriate American known as Rick. As the scene opens, you're in the cafe you have named after yourself, greeting the evening customers. Hello, Rick. Won't you join me for a drink? It was a long road to Casablanca. Please, I must tell you, Rick, I didn't travel it alone. Do you know the name Victor Laszlo? I'm traveling with him, Rick. Here and on to America. The journey has only begun. But now we're going to have a listen to that section again, but this time we're playing it after it's had one five minute clean in the ultrasonic cleaning device. And also, of course, I've cleaned off any gunk that built up on the stylus. So here you go. This is what it sounds like after one clean. As the scene opens, you're in the cafe you have named after yourself. Greeting the evening customers. Hello, Rick. Won't you join me for a drink? It was a long road to Casablanca. Please, I must tell you, Rick, I didn't travel it alone. Do you know the name Victor Laszlo? Right, so there's still plenty of noise there, but I do think it removed some of the louder clicks and pops. There's definitely been a bit of an improvement, although it has still left this bed of crackles. So the next thing I did was to clean the record twice more. Two more five-minute cycles of cleaning, followed by one 10 minute drying time. Now I'll just mention one thing here, if you just set it to clean but don't have it dry afterwards it won't drain the water, so the water's still in there now so I'm able to do a second clean. But I notice if I press the clean button nothing happens so I think I must have to turn it off and on again, there we go. Right, so we're doing the second clean now, another five minutes and then after that we'll dry it. So let's have a listen to what it sounded like after that. Hello, Rick. Won't you join me for a drink? It was a long road to Casablanca. Please, I must tell you, Rick, I didn't travel it alone. Do you know the name Victor Laszlo?
Now, again, it seems like there's been an improvement, but it's still far from perfect. There was one other thing I thought about trying. Is some of that noise down to static? Well, we can find out. I have a zero stat anti-static pistol, and the idea is you shoot this around the record, it should remove the static from it, and then on playback, if any of that noise was caused by static, it should be gone. So let's have a listen to what it sounded like after a go with the anti-static pistol. As the scene opens, you're in the cafe you have named after yourself, greeting the evening customers. Hello, Rick. Won't you join me for a drink? It was a long road to Casablanca. Please, I must tell you, Rick, I didn't travel it alone. Do you know the name Victor Laszlo? I'm traveling with him, Rick. Here and on to America. The journey has only begun. OK, now that definitely improved things even further. I wonder how much of the noise to start with was static. I suspect a lot of it was down to dirt. I mean, it did get accumulated on that stylus. But a combination of both of these things seems to have improved the record. It hasn't got it perfect, though. I mean, it's not the kind of archive quality you might want to do a recording of it or play it on the radio, for example. We've still got a record here that's really quite noisy, and I think that's as far as I can take it with this equipment, which is a bit of a shame. Sometimes it looks like you just can't clean a record sufficiently to get it back to how it would have sounded when it first left the factory. Now, I thought I'll try another record that I've had in the past that I've tried to do a cleaning demonstration with. It's this uh, Trimicron one. You might remember this as having an ultra fine groove so it could get 60 minutes of audio on each side. As a result of that, it accumulates dirt that you really can't get out of there. So it's got a really noisy sound floor on here, loads of crackles and pops. I thought perfect thing to try in the ultrasonic cleaner. Well, I tried it, I went through the process. Uh, I went through the anti-static thing as well, and it just sounded exactly the same both before and after cleaning. Now, there's one thing that you come to terms with whenever you talk about any kind of audio equipment or records, especially whatever you say, you were doing it wrong. You should have done something else. So if we just uh, go with that idea, Maybe I shouldn't be expecting this to properly get rid of all the crackles and pops. Maybe that's an impossibility. Maybe whatever cleaning method I use, i would never get back to that stage. But then you kind of wonder why you'd want to spend £350 on something like this, rather than just cleaning your records with a cloth and some spray. I've got to say, if I have a, a modern record that I bought myself, I know where it's been all the time and it's got any kind of crackles and pops. I'd just clean it with a cloth and some spray and that would sort it out. The older records, the ones you buy second hand, those are the ones where they tend to have some kind of dirt that's stuck in them. Of course, you don't know this until you first play them. And in my experience, when I played that record for the first time, it really gunked up the stylus on this uh, Sony record player. So much so that it then started skipping past parts of the record because it couldn't even see it. There's like a sensor on there that had got stuck full of stuff. So it thought there was no record in it. I think maybe if I take it from a different perspective, instead of expecting it to get rid of all the crackles and pops, as a device that will clean gunk off a record, yeah, it works. Very effective, easy to use. Pop your record in, press a button, walk off. I don't know, 15 minutes later, if you include a five minute clean and a 10 minute drying time, it's sorted. You can shorten that down if you want. So I like the system. Of course, if you're spraying a record and cleaning it with a cloth, you clean one side, then the other side, and it'd take a, a few minutes to do it properly, at least, anyway. Uh, so yeah, now I've got it, I'm going to keep using it, and I think I'm going to use it every time before I play an old record. If I find an old record somewhere, something I want to put, before I even stick it on any record player, I'm going to run it through this to try and get rid of any crud that's stuck in the groove, uh, just to protect the equipment that I'm then using afterwards more than anything else. But yeah, I, I should perhaps get away from the mindset of expecting a device like this 
to get rid of crackles and pops because you get to a certain point and even with the anti-static gun which I've got to say did a great job I had suspicions that these things were all a bit fake but honestly it made a big difference but combination of those two things yeah you can reduce that crackle level down but it doesn't seem like it's possible to get rid of it at least with the setup that I've got here no doubt other things are perfect they'll work great and yes I've reviewed other record cleaning technology type devices in the past and uh, some work better than others I just like the simplicity of this one very easy uh, put a bit of water in it stick your record in it press go sorted so I'm not recommending anyone get one of these I'm not recommending anyone doesn't get one of these. I'm just here to show you what it does, how it works and how effective it was with that one record. I could go through loads of records, maybe it would be better with some than others, but I just had one that I could demonstrate it with in this video and now you've seen it, you can make your own mind up. Anyway, that's it for the moment. As always, thanks for watching.